Neolithic, Wikipedia article audio. Farming, animal husbandry, pottery, metallurgy, wheel, circular ditches, henges, megaliths, Neolithic religion. Periods by pottery phase. Neolithic 1 A Euro pre pottery Neolithic A. Neolithic 2 A Euro pre pottery Neolithic B. Neolithic 3 A Euro pottery Neolithic. Periods by region. Fertile Crescent. Southern Mesopotamia. North Africa. Europe. South and East Asia. America. Social organization. Shelter. Farming. Technology. Clothing. Early settlements. List of cultures and sites. Notes. Citations. Sources. The Neolithic was a period in the development of human technology, beginning about 10,200 BC, according to the Aspro chronology, in some parts of the Middle East, and later in other parts of the world and ending between 4,500 and 2,000 BC. Traditionally considered the last part of the Stone Age or the New Stone Age, the Neolithic followed the terminal Holocene Epipaleolithic period and commenced with the beginning of farming, which produced the Neolithic Revolution. It ended when metal tools became widespread. The Neolithic is a progression of behavioral and cultural characteristics and changes, including the use of wild and domestic crops and of domesticated animals. The beginning of the Neolithic culture is considered to be in the Levant about 10,200 A Euro 8800 BC. It developed directly from the Epipaleolithic Natufian culture in the region, whose people pioneered the use of wild cereals, which then evolved into true farming. The Natufian period lasted between 12,500 and 9,500 BC and the so-called Proto-Neolithic is now included in the pre-Pottery Neolithic between 10,200 and 8,800 BC. As the Natufians had become dependent on wild cereals in their diet, and a sedentary way of life had begun among them, the climatic changes associated with the younger Dryas are thought to have forced people to develop farming. By 10,200 A Euro 8800 BC, farming communities arose in the Levant and spread to Asia Minor, North Africa and North Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is the site of the earliest developments of the Neolithic Revolution from around 10,000 BC. Early Neolithic farming was limited to a narrow range of plants, both wild and domesticated which included einkorn wheat, millet, and spelt, and the keeping of dogs, sheep, and goats. By about 6900 A Euro 6400 BC, it included domesticated cattle and pigs, the establishment of permanently or seasonally inhabited settlements, and the use of pottery. Not all of these cultural elements characteristic of the Neolithic appeared everywhere in the same order. The earliest farming societies in the Near East did not use pottery. In other parts of the world, such as Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, independent domestication events led to their own regionally distinctive Neolithic cultures that arose completely independently of those in Europe and Southwest Asia. Early Japanese societies and other East Asian cultures used pottery before developing agriculture. The term Neolithic derives from the Greek I one half I I I N A copyright O S new and I I I I I La Thos stone, literally meaning New Stone Age. The term was invented by Sir John Lubbock in 1865 as a refinement of the Three Age system. In the Middle East, 
cultures identified as Neolithic began appearing in the 10th millennium BC. Early development occurred in the Levant and from there spread eastwards and westwards. Neolithic cultures are also attested in southeastern Anatolia and northern Mesopotamia by around 8000 BC. The prehistoric Bifudi site near Uxian in Hebei Province, China, contains relics of a culture contemporaneous with the Sishan and Xing Longwei cultures of about 6000 Euro 5000 BC, Neolithic cultures east of the Taehang Mountains, filling in an archaeological gap between the two northern Chinese cultures. The total excavated area is more than 1,200 square yards, and the collection of Neolithic findings at the site encompasses two phases. The Neolithic I period began roughly around 10,000 BC in the Levant. A temple area in southeastern Turkey at Gabikli Tepe dated around 9,500 BC may be regarded as the beginning of the period. This site was developed by nomadic hunter-gatherer tribes, evidenced by the lack of permanent housing in the vicinity and may be the oldest known human-made place of worship. At least seven stone circles, covering 25 acres, contain limestone pillars carved with animals, insects, and birds. Stone tools were used by perhaps as many as hundreds of people to create the pillars which might have supported roofs. Other early PPNA sites dating to around 9500 Euro 9000 BC have been found in Jericho, West Bank, Gilgal in the Jordan Valley, and Byblos, Lebanon. The start of Neolithic I overlaps the Tehunian and heavy Neolithic periods to some degree. The major advance of Neolithic I was true farming. In the Proto-Neolithic Natufian cultures, wild cereals were harvested, and perhaps early seed selection and reseeding occurred. The grain was ground into flour. Emmer wheat was domesticated, and animals were herded and domesticated. In 2006, remains of figs were discovered in a house in Jericho dated to 9400 BC. The figs are of a mutant variety that cannot be pollinated by insects, and therefore the trees can only reproduce from cuttings. This evidence suggests that figs were the first cultivated crop and mark the invention of the technology of farming. This occurred centuries before the first cultivation of grains. Settlements became more permanent with circular houses, much like those of the Natufians with single rooms. However, these houses were for the first time made of mud brick. The settlement had a surrounding stone wall and perhaps a stone tower. The wall served as protection from nearby groups, as protection from floods, or to keep animals penned. Some of the enclosures also suggest grain and meat storage. The Neolithic II began around 8800 BC according to the Aspro chronology in the Levant. As with the PPNA dates, there are two versions from the same laboratories noted above. This system of terminology, however, is not convenient for southeast Anatolia and settlements of the Middle Anatolia Basin. A settlement of 3,000 inhabitants was found in the outskirts of Amman, Jordan. Considered to be one of the largest prehistoric settlements in the Near East, called An Ghazal, it was continuously inhabited from approximately 7,250 BC to approximately 5,000 BC. Settlements have rectangular mud brick houses where the family lived together in single or multiple rooms. Burial findings suggest an ancestor cult where people preserved skulls of the dead, which were plastered with mud to make facial features. The rest of the corpse could have been left outside the settlement to decay until only the bones were left, then the bones were buried inside the settlement underneath the floor or between houses. 
The Neolithic III began around 6400 BC in the Fertile Crescent. By then distinctive cultures emerged, with pottery like the Halafian and Ubaid. This period has been further divided into PNA and PNB at some sites. The Chalcolithic period began about 4500 BC, then the Bronze Age began about 3500 BC, replacing the Neolithic cultures. Around 10,000 BC the first fully developed Neolithic cultures belonging to the phase pre-pottery Neolithic A appeared in the Fertile Crescent. Around 10,700 A Euro 9400 BC a settlement was established in Tel Caramel, 10 miles north of Aleppo. The settlement included two temples dating to 9,650 BC. Around 9000 BC during the PPNA, one of the world's first towns, Jericho, appeared in the Levant. It was surrounded by a stone and marble wall and contained a population of 2,000 euro 3,000 people and a massive stone tower. Around 6400 BC the Halif culture appeared in Lebanon, Israel and Palestine. Syria, Anatolia, and northern Mesopotamia and subsisted on dryland agriculture. In 1981 a team of researchers from the Maison de l'Orient et de la Ma Copyright Diderana Copyright E, including Jacques Cavan and Oliver Orange divided Near East Neolithic chronology into ten periods based on social, economic, and cultural characteristics. In 2002 Danielle Stordur and Fra Copyright de Copyright Rick Abba S. advanced this system with a division into five periods. They also advanced the idea of a transitional stage between the PPNA and PPNB between 8800 and 8600 BC at sites like Jerf el Ahmar and Tel Aswad. Alluvial Plains Little rainfall makes irrigation systems necessary. Ubaid culture from 6900 BC. Domestication of sheep and goats reached Egypt from the Near East possibly as early as 6000 BC. Graham Barker states the first indisputable evidence for domestic plants and animals in the Nile Valley is not until the early 5th millennium BC in northern Egypt and a thousand years later further south, in both cases as part of strategies that still relied heavily on fishing, hunting, and the gathering of wild plants and suggests that these subsistence changes were not due to farmers migrating from the Near East but was an indigenous development with cereals either indigenous or obtained through exchange. Other scholars argue that the primary stimulus for agriculture and domesticated animals in Egypt was from the Middle East. In Southeast Europe agrarian societies first appeared in the 7th millennium BC, attested by one of the earliest farming sites of Europe discovered in Vashtami, southeastern Albania, and dating back to 6500 BC. Anthropomorphic figurines have been found in the Balkans from 6000 BC, and in Central Europe by around 5800 BC. Among the earliest cultural complexes of this area are the Sesclo culture in Thessaly, which later expanded in the Balkans giving rise to Stara. Evoca RIS, Linear Bang Keramik, and Vena. A. Through a combination of cultural diffusion and migration of peoples, the Neolithic traditions spread west and northwards to reach northwestern Europe by around 4500 BC. The Vena. A culture may have created the earliest system of writing, the Vena. Assigns though archaeologist Shan Wen believes they most likely represented pictograms and ideograms rather than a truly developed form of writing. The Cucutani Tripolian culture built enormous settlements in Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine from 5300 to 2300 BC. 
the megalithic temple complexes of Agontija on the Mediterranean island of Gozo and of Najdra are notable for their gigantic Neolithic structures, the oldest of which date back to around 3600 BC. The Hypogeum of Al Safliani, Paula, Malta, is a subterranean structure excavated around 2500 BC, originally a sanctuary. It became a necropolis, the only prehistoric underground temple in the world, and showing a degree of artistry in stone sculpture unique in prehistory to the Maltese islands. After 2500 BC, the Maltese islands were depopulated for several decades until the arrival of a new influx of Bronze Age immigrants, a culture that cremated its dead and introduced smaller megalithic structures called dolmens to Malta. In most cases there are small chambers here, with the cover made of a large slab placed on upright stones. They are claimed to belong to a population certainly different from that which built the previous megalithic temples. It is presumed the population arrived from Sicily because of the similarity of Maltese dolmens to some small constructions found in the largest island of the Mediterranean Sea. The earliest Neolithic sites in South Asia are Purana in Haryana dated to 7570-6200 BC, and Mergarha, dated to between 6500 and 5500 BC. In the Kachi plain of Baluchistan, Pakistan, the site has evidence of farming and herding. In South India, the Neolithic began by 6500 BC and lasted until around 1400 BC when the megalithic transition period began. South Indian Neolithic is characterized by ash mounds since 2500 BC in Karnataka region expanded later to Tamil Nadu. In East Asia, the earliest sites include Nanswangta culture around 9500 A-9000 BC, Penktishan culture around 7500 A-6100 BC, and Piligong culture around 7000 A-5000 BC. The Neolithic remains a living tradition in small and extremely remote and inaccessible pockets of West Papua. Polished stone adzes and axes are used in the present day in areas where the availability of metal implements is limited. This is likely to cease altogether in the next few years as the older generation die off and steel blades and chainsaws prevail. In 2012, News was released about a new farming site discovered in Mu Namarai, Goziong, Gangwon Province, South Korea, which may be the earliest farmland known to date in East Asia. No remains of an agricultural field from the Neolithic period have been found in any East Asian country before, the institute said adding that the discovery reveals that the history of agricultural cultivation at least began during the period on the Korean peninsula. The farm was dated between 3600 and 3000 BC. Pottery, stone projectile points, and possible houses were also found. In 2002, researchers discovered prehistoric earthenware, jade earrings, among other items in the area. The research team will perform accelerator mass spectrometry dating to retrieve a more precise date for the site. In Mesoamerica, a similar set of events occurred by around 4500 BC, but possibly as early as 11,000 Euro 10,000 BC. These cultures are usually not referred to as belonging to the Neolithic, in America different terms are used such as formative stage instead of mid-late Neolithic, archaic era instead of early Neolithic and Paleo-Indian for the preceding period. The formative stage is equivalent to the Neolithic Revolution period in Europe, Asia, and Africa. 
In the southwestern United States it occurred from 500 to 1200 AD when there was a dramatic increase in population and development of large villages supported by agriculture based on dryland farming of maize, and later, beans, squash, and domesticated turkeys. During this period the bow and arrow and ceramic pottery were also introduced. Gabkli Teep in Turkey, c. 11,000 Euro 9000 BC, Gila Nakwitz Cave in Oaxaca, Mexico, c. 11,000 BC, Tel Caramel in Syria, 10,700 Euro 9400 BC, French the Cave in Greece, Epipaleolithic Settlement, reoccupied between 7,500 and 6,000 BC, Nans Wangdu in Hebei, China, 9500 Euro 9000 BC, Biblos in Lebanon believed to have been occupied first between 8,800 and 7,000 BC, Jericho in West Bank, Neolithic from around 8,350 BC, arising from the earlier Epipaleolithic Natufian culture, AAYA plus or minus KLA plus or minus Haya 1 fourth K in Central. Anatolia, Turkey, an A ceramic Neolithic period settlement, 8200 A Euro 7400 BC, correlating with the E slash MPPNB in the Levant, Navali Kori in Turkey. C. 8000 BC. Bison culture, Sishan culture, Dudiidi culture, French the cave people, earliest European Neolithic site, 20th to 3rd millennium BC. Beaker culture, Kyokutani Tripolian culture, Funnel Beaker culture, Gato culture, Lengyel culture, Varna culture. During most of the Neolithic Age of Eurasia, people lived in small tribes composed of multiple bands or lineages. There is little scientific evidence of developed social stratification in most Neolithic societies, social stratification is more associated with the later Bronze Age. Although some late Eurasian Neolithic societies formed complex stratified chiefdoms or even states, States evolved in Eurasia only with the rise of metallurgy, and most Neolithic societies on the whole were relatively simple and egalitarian. Beyond Eurasia, however, states were formed during the local Neolithic in three areas, namely in the Pre-Keramic Andes with the Norte Chico civilization, formative Mesoamerica, and ancient Hawaii. However, most Neolithic societies were noticeably more hierarchical than the Upper Paleolithic cultures that preceded them and hunter-gatherer cultures in general. The domestication of large animals resulted in a dramatic increase in social inequality in most of the areas where it occurred, New Guinea being a notable exception. Possession of livestock allowed competition between households and resulted in inherited inequalities of wealth. Neolithic pastoralists who controlled large herds gradually acquired more livestock, and this made economic inequalities more pronounced. However, evidence of social inequality is still disputed, as settlements such as Catalhuyuk reveal a striking lack of difference in the size of homes and burial sites, suggesting a more egalitarian society with no evidence of the concept of capital although some homes do appear slightly larger or more elaborately decorated than others. Families and households were still largely independent economically, and the household was probably the center of life. However, excavations in Central Europe have revealed that early Neolithic linear ceramic cultures were building large arrangements of circular ditches between 4800 and 4600 BC. These structures required considerable time and labor to construct, which suggests that some influential individuals were able to organize and direct human labor a euro though non-hierarchical and voluntary work remain possibilities.
there is a large body of evidence for fortified settlements at Linear Bang Karamik sites along the Rhine, as at least some villages were fortified for some time with a palisade and an outer ditch. Settlements with palisades and weapon traumatized bones have been discovered, such as at the Talheim Death Pit demonstrates, systematic violence between groups and warfare was probably much more common during the Neolithic than in the preceding Paleolithic period. This supplanted an earlier view of the linear pottery culture as living a peaceful, unfortified lifestyle. Control of labor and intergroup conflict is characteristic of corporate level or tribal groups, headed by a charismatic individual, whether a big man or a proto-chief, functioning as a lineage group head. Whether a non-hierarchical system of organization existed is debatable, and there is no evidence that explicitly suggests that Neolithic societies functioned under any dominating class or individual as was the case in the chiefdoms of the European Early Bronze Age. Theories to explain the apparent implied egalitarianism of Neolithic societies have arisen, notably the Marxist concept of primitive communism. The shelter of the early people changed dramatically from the Upper Paleolithic to the Neolithic era. In the Paleolithic, people did not normally live in permanent constructions. In the Neolithic, mud brick houses started appearing that were coated with plaster. The growth of agriculture made permanent houses possible. Doorways were made on the roof, with ladders positioned both on the inside and outside of the houses. The roof was supported by beams from the inside. The rough ground was covered by platforms, mats, and skins on which residents slept. Stilt houses settlements were common in the Alpine and Pianuropatana region. Remains have been found at the Ljubljana marshes in Slovenia and at the Mon C. and at Sea lakes in Upper Austria, for example. A significant and far-reaching shift in human subsistence and lifestyle was to be brought about in areas where crop farming and cultivation were first developed the previous reliance on an essentially nomadic hunter-gatherer subsistence technique or pastoral transhumance was at first supplemented, and then increasingly replaced by, a reliance upon the foods produced from cultivated lands. These developments are also believed to have greatly encouraged the growth of settlements, since it may be supposed that the increased need to spend more time and labor in tending crop fields required more localized dwellings. This trend would continue into the Bronze Age, eventually giving rise to permanently settled farming towns, and later cities and states whose larger populations could be sustained by the increased productivity from cultivated lands. The profound differences in human interactions and subsistence methods associated with the onset of early agricultural practices in the Neolithic have been called the Neolithic Revolution, a term coined in the 1920s by the Australian archaeologist Veer Gordon Child. One potential benefit of the development and increasing sophistication of farming technology was the possibility of producing surplus crop yields. In other words, food supplies in excess of the immediate needs of the community. Surpluses could be stored for later use, or possibly traded for other necessities or luxuries. Agricultural life afforded securities that pastoral life could not, and sedentary farming populations grew faster than nomadic. However, Early farmers were also adversely affected in times of famine, such as may be caused by drought or pests. In instances where agriculture had become the predominant way of life, the sensitivity to these shortages could be particularly acute, affecting agrarian populations to an extent that otherwise may not have been routinely experienced by prior hunter-gatherer communities. Nevertheless, Agrarian communities generally proved successful, and their growth and the expansion of territory under cultivation continued. 
Another significant change undergone by many of these newly agrarian communities was one of diet. Pre-agrarian diets varied by region, season, available local plant and animal resources and degree of pastoralism and hunting. Post-agrarian diet was restricted to a limited package of successfully cultivated cereal grains, plants, and to a variable extent domesticated animals and animal products. Supplementation of diet by hunting and gathering was to variable degrees precluded by the increase in population above the carrying capacity of the land and a high sedentary local population concentration. In some cultures, there would have been a significant shift toward increased starch and plant protein. The relative nutritional benefits and drawbacks of these dietary changes and their overall impact on early societal development is still debated. In addition, increased population density, decreased population mobility, increased continuous proximity to domesticated animals, and continuous occupation of comparatively population-dense sites would have altered sanitation needs and patterns of disease. The identifying characteristic of Neolithic technology is the use of polished or ground stone tools, in contrast to the flake stone tools used during the Paleolithic era. Neolithic people were skilled farmers, manufacturing a range of tools necessary for the tending, harvesting, and processing of crops and food production. They were also skilled manufacturers of a range of other types of stone tools and ornaments, including projectile points, beads, and statuettes. But what allowed forest clearance on a large scale was the polished stone axe above all other tools. Together with the adze, fashioning wood for shelter, structures, and canoes for example, this enabled them to exploit their newly won farmland. Neolithic peoples in the Levant, Anatolia, Syria, northern Mesopotamia, and Central Asia were also accomplished builders, utilizing mud brick to construct houses and villages. At A. Adelhaya 1 4th K, houses were plastered and painted with elaborate scenes of humans and animals. In Europe, long houses built from wattle and dog were constructed. Elaborate tombs were built for the dead. These tombs are particularly numerous in Ireland, where there are many thousands still in existence. Neolithic people in the British Isles built long barrows and chamber tombs for their dead and causewayed camps, Hengess, flint mines, and cursus monuments. It was also important to figure out ways of preserving food for future months such as fashioning relatively airtight containers, and using substances like salt as preservatives. The peoples of the Americas and the Pacific mostly retained the Neolithic level of tool technology until the time of European contact. Exceptions include copper hatchets and spearheads in the Great Lakes region. Most clothing appears to have been made of animal skins, as indicated by finds of large numbers of bone and antler pins that are ideal for fastening leather. Wool cloth and linen might have become available during the later Neolithic, as suggested by finds of perforated stones that may have served as spindle whorls or loom weights. The clothing worn in the Neolithic age might be similar to that worn by Aitzi the Iceman, although he was not Neolithic. Neolithic human settlements include The world's oldest known engineered roadway, the Sweet Track in England, dates from 3800 BC and the world's oldest freestanding structure is the Neolithic Temple of Agontija in Gozo, Malta. Note, dates are very approximate, and are only given for a rough estimate, consult each culture for specific time periods. Early Neolithic, periodization, the Levant, 10,000 A Euro 8500 BC, Europe, 5,000 A Euro 4000 BC, elsewhere, varies greatly, 
depending on region. Middle Neolithic, Periodization, The Levant, 8500A Euro 6500 BC, Europe, 4000A Euro 3500 BC, elsewhere, varies greatly, depending on region. Later Neolithic, Periodization, 6500A Euro 4500 BC, Europe, 3500A Euro 3000 BC, elsewhere, varies greatly, depending on region. Periodization, Middle East, 4500A Euro 3300 BC, Europe, 3000A Euro 1700 BC, elsewhere, varies greatly, depending on region. In the Americas, the Neolithic ended as late as the 19th century AD for some peoples.